In this video, I'll show you how to paint a member of the Iron Golems Warband. If this is your first time on the channel, then please consider subscribing. If not, then just sit back and enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so the way we're going to paint this ogre is we're going to paint the armor, the skin, and the trim. Now, the reason we're doing that way is because the armor could be quite messy. So we'll do that first, and then we can tidy up everything else around it. So starting with Balthazar Gold, we're just going to paint all the armor bits and all the trim. So that's all these areas around here. Make sure you give everything a good cover. You might need to go in and give it a couple of coats, depending on how well your Balthazar gold actually covers. Mine's not too bad. It's pretty good. Don't forget to get all the trim. And these hammers here. Uh, the other bits that's really important to get as well, because we might as well do it now. So let's get all these uh, dangly bits on his loincloth. And then we can also do this part here as well, which has a gold or a brass effect to it. So I'm going to go off and finish the rest of it now. We'll get back once we've got all of the armour and trim painted in Balthazar Gold. Once you've got all the gold done with Balthazar Gold, and just to say as well, this is over a zenith all highlight. So it was black and then white over the top of it. So we're just now going to cover all the Balthazar gold in Nuln Oil. Now, it's not the gloss one, it's just the normal one. And that's there's reason for that. I just want it to look a little bit flat underneath. Um, we'll add some shine back in later. So get your Nuln Oil all over. Um, all over the trim as well, because that will save us a little bit of time later on. Depending on how tidy we are with the, uh, the main bit of armour. So just work the nail oil all the way around the Balthazar gold, uh, including the belt and the loincloth, and then we'll come back and move on to the next stage of the armour. Once the nail oil is dried, we're just going to rough up the armour a little bit, and the colour we're going to use for this is Hachette Copper. I've just got a really old dry brush, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stab at the armour, just like that. Uh, and it's going to do all this on the armour that's going to be red. Don't worry if you get any of it on the trim. But what this will do, will just give a real subtle highlight. And the impression of distressed uh, metal underneath. And then once we finish that, the next colour we're going to use is Stormhole Silver. In exactly the same way. So... We're going to use it a little bit like a dry brush. Now, don't worry about cleaning your brush off at all, because uh, what it'll do, that silver will kind of mix in a little bit with the Hachette Copper. And you can just see there, it gives it that kind of brighter look in terms of distressing the armour. Um, it's a little bit on the back there as well. A little bit down on the leg and the knees. So give that a minute just to dry off. And then we'll come back and we'll get the armour finished. Once that's all dry, we're going to go in and get the red armour done. And to do this, we're going to use the Flesh Terrors uh, contrast paint. This is the darker of the two reds. Uh, but hopefully the armour should make it pop a little. So I'm just going to start off on this knee down here. You don't worry about being too tidy with this. Uh, we're going to go back in. Those spikes are actually silver in colour, so we're going to go in and touch those up. Just work the contrast paint around and into this bit of shin here as well. It's really important that you don't put too much contrast paint on, but they do get enough to make sure that you can actually stain uh, essentially those parts of the model. Just work it across all the bits of gold. 
try and be tidy if you come up against any bits of trim because uh, that just saves any clear up time later on so let's look at this uh, shoulder pad for example so these two parts of metal don't have too much detail on them so we can just be quite happy with the contrast paint there uh, but when we come around to this part of the shoulder pad you can see there's these red rivets so we don't really want to get those covered he says as he instantly covers one up we'll have to go back and fix that later and also when we kind of come around here we've got these little areas as well so just work your way around the armor getting all that flesh terrors red contrast paint over it and then we'll come back and have a look at how much tidying up we need to do on the trim before we go on to the skin once the red's dry you can see it's really taking a uh, good shape now so Going to go back in and just tidy up some of this trim so just using hashet copper again you see where i made a bit of a mistake here we're just gonna highlight that up and then highlight some of these other areas as well use the edge of your brush to work along some of the raised trim and just make sure that you're being really careful not to get any on the red parts of the armour, just highlight that up. So there you are, you can work your way all the way around the armour now, just using that hash at copper to bring back the, the shine. Take your time so you don't make any mistakes. Uh, and then once you're done with that, we can go back, we'll just give the trim a little bit of a highlight, and then the armour's done, we'll go on with the skin. I've gone in and just used that hash at copper to highlight all of the brass trim and the last thing I'm going to do is just use some storm hose silver not too much on my brush and I'm just going to use this in those areas where you're going to get the most reflection on the trim just to give a little bit of interest and also make sure that we've got some nice contrast and that the brass doesn't look too flat uh, one thing I have done as well, I kind of went onto the red armour a little bit and just, just edged the red armour just to give it a, a bit of a, a bit of interest on there as well so that doesn't look too flat. Hopefully the stippling you've done underneath should be sufficient, but if not then you can use that. Um, I'm just going to use the storm host just to highlight these bits and also on some of the trim just on those sharpest edges and the bits of hammer coming off there around there so work your way around the model find as many bits that you think should have that silver highlight and again it's quite subtle it's not anything heavy uh, and then we'll come back and we'll get the skin done with the armor and the trim done we're just going to move on to the skin uh, and we're going to use iron arc skin as the base for this and just be careful around where you've already put the red uh, because you don't want to get too much on that. Just work it on. The Zenithal Prime should do a little bit of work in terms of giving you some shading and interest. I'm just going to work my way around the big major parts of flesh here. Uh, like I said, be really careful when you come around to these red bits of armour. You don't want to accidentally spill onto them because it'll be really difficult to fix up. So just take your time, work the iron arc skin all the way around these big fleshy parts that this breacher ogre has got. And then once we've done that, we'll come back and we'll have a look at shading. Again, take your time when you get to the the red areas. It might be worth going back and just spending a little bit of time making sure it's in there. Don't worry too much about spilling onto these metal areas in here because we'll be doing those uh, as one of the last parts of this model. It's coming together fairly quickly as well. So I'll go off and finish the last of the skin and then we'll come back and have a look at a shade. Next up is Reichland Flesh Shade. Now I've mixed this with Lamia Medium, about one to one, just to give it a little bit of a 
a thinner consistency and we're just going to paint this over the iron arc flesh um, the Lamian medium will stop it being so strong um, which means we can really pick out the bits we want to um, in a more subtle way and we don't have to worry too much about going back in and and fixing where perhaps we've got some pooling that doesn't really work with the rest of the model so just paint this all over focusing on getting it into the recesses and don't worry too much if you decide to cover the whole and the whole model you can always go back in and touch up uh, a little later on just work your way around things like the feet where you really want to get it in there uh, this just adds a kind of a, a human element or some life to the skin because this is supposed to be uh, covered in ash so the ashes from their forges is why the iron golems have this white skin so just work your way around and then we'll come back in and we'll start highlighting once the Reichland flesh shade is dry, uh, dry we'll go back in with the uh, deepkin flesh and we're just looking for the most raised areas we've got some muscle sinew and bundles in there like that we'll pull down pull it down there and just there like that and you can just work your way across the model highlighting all the raised uh, bits of detail and when you're working on the feet you just draw a line take your time get those highlights in there that's a really effective way of highlighting the foot so work your way around the model pick out all the most raised edges of flesh and then we've only got one more colour left to do. With all the layering done, it's just time to go up and do the last bit, which is really all the metallic. So the colour we're going to use is a lead belcher. And this is going to be for all the horns and all the studs pointing out obviously these big areas here of the wrecking ball and the hammer it's just work your way around take your time don't put too much paint on because you don't want to cover up any detail make sure you work all the way round and then once we've worked all the way around that we'll come back and we'll add a wash and then we'll highlight it the last thing to do before basing is just put a little highlight so you can use uh, chrome from Vallejo Model A um, and we're just gonna pull this along all the edges, the sharpest edges, just to make the metal pop a little bit. Just make sure that we get plenty. Here comes these big spikes coming out the shoulder pads. Just use the side of the brush where you can. Always think about where light is coming from. So in this instance, it's coming from the top. So let's just work our way around. And get those spikes highlighted. Same for the chains. Just take your time. But just use the edge of the brush. Just give you a really nice highlight. When it comes to the chain mail, just drag your brush down it lightly. We'll leave that bit in there because that'll be in shadow naturally. We'll get this part of the hammer done. 
take your time. Use thin lines where you can. Just touch up those rivets. Pull it down. So I'm just going to work my way around now, find any last highlights, and then it's ready for basing. And there we have it, a finished Iron Golems Warband member. I really enjoyed painting this, and it's really exciting to see the new Warcry starter set coming out. I'll be picking one up myself. How about you? Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a like and maybe a comment down below, and I'll get back to any questions you may have. If you'd like to support the channel, then there are a couple of links below if you indeed want to order your own Warcry starter set. These are for Goblin Gaming. It doesn't cost you anything uh, extra. However, I do get a small percentage of the sale. So if you do want to support the channel, then please feel free to click that link. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.